What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 12 of the Bayer Leverkusen Let's Play here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good. If you missed the last episode, please do go check it out. It was a big game against Leipzig. Since then, we've played three games. You might notice I'm in higher spirits today. There is a reason for that and that is the fact we are finally finding our feet again. Yes, three wins since you were last here. Of course, last episode we took on Leipzig. It was a 2-2 draw. Um, we were 2-0 up. We bottled it. I'm still a bit annoyed about that. But ultimately, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the team top of the Bundesliga who look very likely to win it, it's hard not to take some positivity away from that. Since then, with that new system that we tried out, which was strikerless, um, I've changed things over the last couple of games. I have a system that's still very much a work in progress, but it's it's okay. You know, obviously, it's seen us get some good results. It's looking very solid defensively. Still working on the goal scoring front, and uh, well, we'll have a look at that in just a second. But before we do, just to run you through the game since you were last here, the first match we had against Stuttgart, a game that we dominated for the most part. Rasmus Falk got injured in the 81st minute after we'd used all our subs. Fortunately, however, Kai Havertz, lovely little finish from him, playing the shadow striker role into the bottom corner, ensured that we came away with all three points. The next game we had was against Nuremberg. They are right down there at the bottom of the table, a game that I expect us to win. In this match, we did change things up a little bit, a bit of experimentation. Victor Fischer got the goal for us. However, since that uh, goal, you can see just looking at his profile here, he tore his hamstring. Um, it's a long-term injury, three months out. It means that he is not going to be available for the rest of this season, which is a big, big shame. Speaking of the injuries, just to look at them, I feel like our injuries as of late have been pretty unfortunate. If we just look at the injury history page here, you can see just how many injuries we've had. We've had 10 this month, which is pretty mad, to be honest. Um, in terms of those injuries, they've been fairly significant ones as well. There's very few here that have been a matter of a couple of days. You kind of look through them. Julian Brandt, Sven Bender, Jonathan Tarr, Markovic, Falk, Paketa out for three to five weeks. That's a big injury for one of our playmakers. Fischer obviously tore his hamstring out for the rest of the season. Almiron, as we'll get onto in a second, got injured against Augsburg. I mean, Almiron and injuries name a more iconic duo. It's been pretty unfortunate. I mean, you can see here in terms of um, the players who have been missing game time. Weiser, five injuries. Obviously, a lot of that was down to his most recent injury where he, well, he got that horrific injury, was out for four or five months. Almiron, though, nine injuries. He's been out for 154 days in the last 12 months. Absolutely kind of mad, really, that he's been injured quite that much. Elsewhere, you can see Paulino and Julian Brandt right up there, too. Um, we've missed a lot of key players this year. Um, obviously, some of this backdates to the pre-season and before I was here, but really, I feel like we've been really blooming unlucky. You can see here, we do have the most injuries in the league at the moment. So, we're still kind of juggling things. Five at the moment, but... I guess it could be worse. Unfortunately, they've been to a lot of players in similar positions. Anyway, our most recent game was against Augsburg, as you can see here. A 2-0 win. Almiron did score before he got injured in this game. He opened it up uh, in the 19th minute. And uh, Leon Bailey chipped in with a goal to add to his collection as we came away 2-0 victors. In this match, evolution of the tactic continued. We went with a striker instead of playing strikerless. Kevin Volland playing as a complete forward. It seemed to work okay in this game. We'll look at that in just a second. Uh, on the Leon Bailey front, obviously, See, he scored in this match, but he has been kicking up a fuss. Uh, his contract is not up for four years, but Bayern have come in. They're kicking up a bit of a fuss. I've tried to get a contract negotiation going with Leon, but his contract demands are completely unreasonable. I can't offer him the money that he wants. So at the moment, he's not a very happy bunny because of that. So perhaps a situation unraveling there. Of course, no real pressure to sell him given the time left on his contract. But it, it, it is still a little bit of a concern, you know. You don't really want to have players like him unsettled in the team. Anyway, in terms of the title race, there are four games left of the season, including today's match, which is against Hoffenheim. They are, of course, in fifth. A win here would pretty much guarantee us Champions League football. It would mean one point... Uh, in any of our remaining three games and obviously Hoffenheim having to win every game would take the, the differential to goal difference we should beat them um, today and if we do top four is pretty much guaranteed elsewhere in the league you can see here Leipzig leading by four points but their remaining games are not freebies they've got Bayern still to play they've got Mainz, Hertha Berlin, Werder Bremen they've got to play teams in the top eight 
Borussia Dortmund and Bayern, on the other hand, slightly easier fixtures. You know, uh, Werder Bremen also got to play Dortmund. Bayern, of course, got to play against Leipzig. There is still an outside chance that this could go down to the wire, but Leipzig at the moment, six points ahead of us. Our goal difference, just not good enough. Um, regardless of what happens today, it's very unlikely we're going to be in the title race. So the chances are this may well be the last match that we cover live this season before, well, potentially next season being the end of season review, which, uh, well, if you're new to the channel, new to the series, essentially at the end of every year, I like to kind of put a nice bow tie on the season, talk about what happens, the good, the bad, the ugly plans going forward. Uh, it's sometimes nice just to collect your thoughts into just a one-off video like that. Anyway, that's kind of the the title race news. I mean, if you look at the league table here, you can see five points ahead of Hoffenheim. There are, well, four games left, three after today's game. A win here would take us eight points, actually, ahead of them. I can't see them turning that around. It would, it would take a monumental collapse, even by our standards. Anyway, in terms of the team for today's game, we've got a lot of resting going on. The Augsburg game was only two days ago, so not a whole lot of time for recovery. I've rested players as best as possible. Leon Bailey probably still not fit for today's game, so we're going to have to bring in Brandt. Uh, elsewhere, though, things are looking okay. Bacatus obviously out injured with that calf strain that we talked about already. Fisher out for the rest of the season. Falk um, got injured in that match that we talked about before. Lucas is injured. I mean, you can see here the players with FT have had fitness tests because they've come back from injury recently. There's a fair few of them on here. Of course, not all of them first-team players, but it does kind of all add up and wear you down just a little bit. Anyway, there was something else I wanted to talk about. I'm trying to remember what it was. Ah, I know what it was. It was the tactics because they've been evolving. Yes, um, I have been changing things up. I've been experimenting. We've been very good defensively as of late, but, well, when it comes to goal scoring, we've been lacking. Hence the decision for the game against Augsburg to switch from a shadow striker to a complete forward. That has immediately paid back, well, with a two-goal haul, which was the most we've had in any of our games prior to that, of course, two 1-0 victories. In terms of other player roles here, a few changes since you were last here. Sven Bender, you should not be on stopper. But the rest of the team, you can see here, Core playing as a halfback for us. Yes, a role that I've never really used in any of my tactics, to be honest, in FM since it was added. Um, at least not regularly here on a YouTube save. Um, you may have seen on the channel I did a video all about playing with three centre-backs. I did cover the halfback role in that video. Off the back of it, it kind of got my kind of cogs turning in my head as to whether or not it's something I could use here. And Core, to be honest, is very well suited to play in this role. He's not the quickest centre-back, he's not the greatest in the air, but he's an intelligent player, and, well, with the only gap in his game being his composure, he feels like a pretty good half-back option for us. And what it allows is, when we do have our complete forwards getting forward, which we now have look for overlap set on, so they do get more forward, he just slots in, becomes a third centre-back, essentially, for us, and does a very, very good job defensively, whilst the more creative players ahead of him, you know, do their thing in the final third. Anyway, talking about the instructions, I talked about look for the overlap. These have changed a little bit since the game against Leipzig. I can't remember exactly how they were um, because it was four games or what go now. Um, but by default, these passing directness and tempos are set lower on the control possession system. So we've changed to those. In terms of mentality, I've been playing positive most of the time, although I have changed to attacking a few times in second halves. In terms of in transition, we just have counter set on here. Not doing any mental pressing because, well... I feel like it's kind of been counterintuitive in a lot of ways with all the injuries we've been getting. Elsewhere, you can see out of possession. We're still playing with a high line of engagement, but not the same pressing that we were having before. Rather, volunteer whilst he starts high up the pitch and will engage high. Um, I, I don't want him chasing, you know, too crazily here. He's going to try and cut out the short goalkeeper passes, force them to go long into our congested midfield. But... Yeah, this is what we've got going on right now. Uh, again, I apologise. I really should have scribbled down um, after the Leipzig game what we were using at that moment in time. But this is what we're doing now. So it's still very much the same philosophy of the control in play. Still playing with the Mazala with Arangis. I could probably change this actually. I was thinking about this the other night. This is what I think about night, about changing this to a centre mid on attack which I think we're going to do, because the Mazala kind of drifts into half spaces. The half space doesn't really exist with Brandt as an inside forward on support, so that's kind of pointless. But this is the team I think we're going to go with today. Fitness is a bit of a concern. As I mentioned, the game that we just played against Augsburg was only two days ago, so players are recovering. Hoffenheim going to be in a similar situation. They played on the same day. You can see here it is a full fixture of Bundesliga games. Freiburg at home against Bayern. 
Wolfsburg away from home against Dortmund. Maybe they can do us some favours. That would be the dream. And well, let's get into today's game, shall we? We're going to submit this team. Still tweaking the tactical system. We'll see how the halfback works in its live commentary debut. I mentioned already it's a system that I've not really used, the halfback. Uh, and a role that, um, well, I'm hoping is going to show us the positives of it. Anyway, it's a bit weird. I now get to do a team talk for attackers again for a short while. That was not an option without our striker. But let's see what we can do here. This is a big game for us. Really trying to push for the Champions League. This game, a win here, would secure that for us pretty much um, with a few games in the bag. And, of course, that was the aim at the start of the season. I feel like there's a bit of pressure in these kind of games where you've gone on a good little run. Granted, we've had easier games, but we've kept three clean sheets in a row, three wins off camera. We want to keep it going. We're going to keep it going at least to begin with here. Two and a half minutes gone. Volland with the goal. Hoffenheim, we did live come already this season. You may remember that. It was a 3-0 home victory. And while well, Volland leaps like a salmon, Bormann and the entire, to be honest, Hoffenheim defence should be doing better there. They didn't. And with that, we move up to third. Let's have a party. Uh, could we get another? I mean, this system, as I said, it's been very, very good defensively. It has lacked a little in the kind of chance creation department. You might have noticed in the game against Augsburg, they dominated that match. They created way, way more than us. I'm hoping that was just a one-game thing and that this isn't going to be too much of concern. But, well, we've got to be good here. And while they're on the attack, Karamic, I think that's how you say his name, or was it Karamic? I'm not sure. Answers on a postcard. But... Radeski, not the most convincing of saves, but he has dealt with it here. Ball whipped in Adams. In fact, no, it was Nuhu. It went over the crossbar. But relax, it's fine. It, it was never going in, he says, whilst kind of wincing a little. Hoffenheim have actually been better in this game of the two sides in terms of stats, but we lead on the well the, the scoreline, which is where it matters. And while well, Weiser here, to have it, to have a go, my son, Weiser. Arangis hits it. Lovely placed shot from outside the box. He got two against them earlier on in the year. Apparently Arangis just loves playing against Hoffenheim. 2-0. Somewhat against the run of play. They've had significantly more shots. We've had the same amount on target. The difference is both of ours have flown into the back of the net. Weiser playing this complete wing-back role. He is um, now set, obviously, with the team instruction. Look for the overlap. Um, kind of getting slightly higher up the pitch, which really does suit his game quite nicely. Julian Brandt's taken a knock and wants to come off. It's a bruised shin, apparently. I really don't want to risk it, though. So what we'll do is we'll bring on Leon Bailey, who I was hoping to rest. He'll go on to the right. Paulino will go on to the left, where he is more naturally suited to play, cutting in on his right foot. And we'll hope that that isn't too... Uh, we'll hope it is a bruised shin, I guess. I was about to say, we'll hope it's not too serious. I don't think it will be. But given all his fitness worries, I don't really want to chance it. I feel like I should acknowledge that shot that went on whilst I rambled away. That was one hell of an effort by Hoffenheim. I mean, maybe we can score a screamer ourselves. That would be nice. Weiser. I mean, that is a foul by a player who's already on a booking, I think. Oh, we're going to VAR. Is that to decide if it's a second yellow or for a different player or if it was in the penalty area or not? I don't even know what's happening, but we're looking at a screen. We need we need the like quiz TV show music at this moment in time. What's happening, Ref? What's he going to do? It's a free kick. Okay, so the offence happened outside the box. So it wasn't for a second yellow. I mean, I, I was hoping it was going to be a second yellow for their left centre mid. This guy, whose name I don't want to say for fear of mispronouncing it. But alas, it wasn't. And that header goes narrowly over the crossbar. Hoffenheim have been having a lot of efforts here. But they've not really been of quality. And well, we've got a chance here. Core, what a header that is, my son. We'll take that all day, every day. I said he wasn't good in the air. As a centre-back, as a half-back, you don't need to be good in the air, except when it's like this, and well, he was good enough. Arangis with an assist, lovely header, keeper debatably should have done better. It's 3-0 here, apparently we love scoring against Hoffenheim. And as you can see there, looking at the replay, it was onside, never in doubt, lovely header. The ball made it easy for him to generate the power on that header, but he's done it. And well, we're 3-0 up, we're cruising, see? I said we might be under pressure. You know, three games in a row where we kind of scraped by but kept clean sheets. They've been good. Don't get me wrong. Hoffenheim have had chances, but we've done pretty good. We've had zero clear-cut chances and zero half chances, but we've taken all the quarter chances that came our way. And that's what really matters. It's the moral victory. I feel like the way FM goes, you have games where you create all the clear-cut chances in the world and can't score. And then you have games like this where it just feels like everything that your players touch turns to gold. 
Long may it continue is all I'm going to say. Sam Bender on a booking. With us being 3-0 up, I really don't want to risk him. So I'm going to just bring in Retzos. Which might seem a little bit odd to take off club captain. But at 3-0, I feel like we can afford to rest him. And while Rangis, I thought for a second he was going to score again. You know, I thought we were going to have another one for the Hoffenheim... Well, banger screenshot, I guess, for uh, screenshot folder. What am I talking about? Essentially, I'm implying that our players have a folder on their PC dedicated to bangers against Hoffenheim because we seem to score good goals against them. But I didn't do a very good job of conveying that as a thought in a concise sentence. And while we need to deal with this, what are we doing? Ball pulled across. I mean, Hradeski was kind of left there to the wolves, wasn't he? He was not going to be able to stop that from, well, pretty much point blank range. And a player called Snail. I read that as Snail to begin with. He was pretty quick for a Snail. And uh, he's lashed it in the bottom corner. I feel like Horodesky maybe could do better. I know it's going across his goal and he has to kind of readjust his feet. But it looked savable, if you ask me. Regardless, it, w it wasn't saved. So it doesn't matter if I think it was savable or not. 3-1 here, though. We've got one sub left in our back pocket. Paulino's not the greatest of games. I don't really have a ready-made player for him. I guess... I could move Bailey out on the left, move Volan there, and then, yeah, we'll do this. We'll bring in Ben Yedda, who had a really good start to his time at the club. To be fair, his goal-scoring return's still been pretty good. Perhaps unfortunate that we've not got given him more game time. Naturally, with our shift to a non-striker system, Ben Yedda's not quite been getting the same opportunities. But we're going to give him a chance today with 20 minutes left against a tiring Hoffenheim side who have already played twice this week to, well, ha really have a go at them. Maybe we can create something here. Kai Havertz, I mean, I'm going to claim that he intentionally tried to play a 1-2 with Leon Bailey, but it looked like Leon Bailey did not know what was going on around him. Maybe he forgot there's a football match to be played. Regardless, a goal conceded here would be slightly squeaky bum time because with 17 minutes left, two goals, definitely a, well, a lead that could be turned around by Hoffenheim. Fortunately, it was just the pointless highlight, so we can relax for now. Ben Yedder, can you show us what you're made of? Set piece here, weird camera angle. Headed clear, Vendel, the left back, surely not from that range. Core got one goal to his name already. Gives away the ball there. That could spell trouble. They're going to be on the counter here. Lots of players bringing it forward. Can we stop the ball getting into the box? It's whipped in, headed. Uh, the snail scored again. He's only got two goals this season. They've both been in this game. I mean, how's he scored so few? Oh, okay. He's only played two games all year, apparently. Uh, what do I want to do here? I feel like maybe I should, maybe we should just drop the the full back, the wing backs onto wing back on defend. Let's just, let's just calm down a little bit, everyone. You know, we don't need to do anything too crazy here. Ben Yedi, you're going to be a bit more on your own now, so you can play as an advance forward. The rest of the team will keep the same. I mean, we just we just need to kill off this match now, or try to. Imagine if we bottled this after the game against Leipzig last time. I would not live it down. Don't do it to me, FM. It's not going to do it to me. We're going to win 3-2. It should have been far more convincing. Fortunately, our goal-scoring escapades today have made up for our defensive frailties. I didn't mean to tell the assistant to do that, but um, he, he did the team talk. He, he sat there thinking, boss me, but you, you love doing the team talk. What a win that is. That is a great result for us. Looking at it here, Leipzig lost against Hertha Berlin 3-1. Bayern lost as well and Dortmund won. Okay, well that kind of makes things a little more interesting. I guess we'll know by next episode where we'll be taking on Hertha Berlin to end the season. If we come back for that game as part of the end of season live com, you know what's happened. But between then and now, we've got Frankfurt and Schalke to play. That game against Hertha Berlin could prove crucial. We could go into it with a chance at the title. Leipzig's games aren't a given. And with our form, I mean, we're looking okay given the opposition we've got coming up. Hopefully, we can keep it going. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. I do hope you've enjoyed. If you have, leave a like on the video. If you've got any comments with regards to the series, of course, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.